Um, and this is another Pick Live show. This week, it's all about long exposures. Here we go. So what is going on? I hope you've had a great week and you are getting ready for the holiday season. We've had a great week here in Vegas. Um, just to let you know, I'm really ill today. <laughs> so if my energy is low and I slowly get lower and lower throughout the show, my apologies. I'm going to try and keep my energy high. We're going to look at all of your photos. We've had loads of submissions this week, which is really, really exciting. So thank you so much. Also, look at this. Look at our festive lights. This here is our, is our, is our symbolic tree that we have in Studio Two here. Um, I love that. We've just had a discussion, actually, me and my team. Um, we call these fairy lights in the UK. I believe in the US you call them Christmas lights. I don't know. I don't know that I'm into that. I think they're fairy. They're sent to us by the fairies. What do you think, Ray? I don't know about that. <laughs> he, he's, not sure. he's not sure about that. Okay, so... Um, Remember, you can write to me during this live show. All you have to do is head over to the, the comments here. I think it's this side. I don't really know. I've never taken part in it because I'm always on the screen. But all you have to do, you can write down your questions, your comments, anything there whatsoever. And um, I'll try and answer those questions live during this show. Also, remember, I've just remembered this, guys, that people can submit their own questions and we didn't even check if anybody did. Um, my bad, it's because I'm not particularly well this week, but you can send in your videos, your video questions, meaning you can grab your phone, you can say, hey, Ed, I want to know all about the brand new Sony range of cameras, and I would like you to talk through which ones you think are the best, for example. And then you can upload that to me, we'll play that during the show, and I will do some research prior to the show to answer that question in depth. So, where do you upload that photograph, you might ask? Well, you upload it at photosincolor.com forward slash live. That is where you can get all of the links to absolutely everything that you're going to need. Here it is on the screen right now. Um, there's on the left hand side, you'll see the current week's upload button. Then on the right hand side is your video submission so you can submit your questions. We're not going to do one this week because I forgot about it. But this is what's important about the video questions are. If you ask me a, a question, I don't only answer it that week. If I get lots of questions, I will try and get to them in future weeks if they're still relevant. So that's the main thing there. Okay, so um, let's jump in. We're going to be critiquing your photos. This is where you guys send me your photographs. I jump in and start critiquing them and telling you what my thoughts are. Now, something that I'm going to start doing now is I've been harsh on you guys. I've had some requests to be tougher um, with my critiquing, so that's going to start happening. So um, please submit your best photos that you've got, and um, I'll I'll jump in and give you some critiques. So let's jump on here and let's start taking a look. Let's have a look here. I'm going to go into the develop module. Voila! So this one here was sent in by um, Stephen Martin. Stevie J13 on Instagram. So that's the other thing, guys. Remember, on Instagram, um, you, you have your name, your at name. So when you upload your photograph, include that in the title of your photo. That means if I post it on Instagram and I share your work, people can go and find you. You'll get more followers and people will give you lots of love and support because here we're all about community. Um, was that a little cheesy? It was a little cheesy, wasn't it? That was, that was a little bit like, oh, group hugs. Let's have, I like group hugs, though. But not today, because I'm not well, and I'll make everyone ill. Um, OK, so let's jump back in and actually do some looking here. Um, this is a long exposure, um, which is on theme for this week. I really like it. I like it that we've got the solid columns here, which means that they're not moving. So we've got a nice um, texture here. And then over on the right hand side, we have the people that are moving, which shows the long exposure. Really like it. I just feel like as an edit, it's just a. It doesn't pop out. It doesn't do anything for me. So one thing that I do with black and whites that I like to see is something more like this. Make my blacks black and make my whites white. So now if we look at the before and the after, what we've got here is something which is way more punchy. It's now jumping out of the screen and a lot more interesting. I even like the fact that down here you've got a really, really dark shadow so that um, 
The bottom of the frame even looks like it's a little wonky, which is what I like. I also like the word wonky. I think it's a good word. Um, so Stephen Martin, I think great photo. Um, you've managed to get everything which is hard with long exposure to be um, exposed correctly. You've not blown out your highlights. A little bit more work on your editing is needed. Make things pop. Okay, here we go. Adam Watson, you have uploaded this um, festive photo. Sorry, I'm drinking water. Um, now, <clears throat> there's some trees going down a lane and they're covered in beautiful fairy lights. I'm gonna say that they are fairy lights. Why are they fairy lights? Because they're not currently on Christmas trees. They're on regular trees. Fairies live everywhere. <laughs> uh, if you have an opinion about fairy lights or the Christmas lights or fairy lights, please let us know. Um, so I actually really like this. Uh, my guess is we don't have any metadata on this, I don't think. Let me see if we do. Ple oh, no, we do. So 20 mil, ISO 100, no flash, and F22, great. So the F32 seconds? Wow, that is a long exposure. So great work, and it, it's long exposures that we're looking at. I think you've done a nice job here. I like the framing on the sides of the trees. I, I'm guessing is this a car or is it a bicycle? Who knows what that might be, because it's a single light, maybe a motorbike. Either way, I think it's a nice, interesting shot. Uh, I like the floor here, but I feel like it's just that little bit dark. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull it out too much. Hmm. So we've managed to lift it out a hair just to really make it pop. I also think we're missing the top of the trees maybe. And so angling up a little bit more could have been great. Um, but great work on the long exposure. Again, you've not, you've not overexposed, which is hard to do. Okay, so this is something different. This is from Anthony Bonventre. So sorry about your names, guys. I'm terrible at that. Um, this, I believe, is a long exposure. However, nothing is moving. So it just means that you've got this nice, soft feeling. Maybe it was taken and it was really dark outside and we've just got the reflection. I'm actually gonna take a look here and I'm going to look at the, yeah, this was a 20 second exposure. So with long exposures, it's not always about having things moving so you're capturing movement and you're blurring the movement. You can actually use long exposures to create a different effect. What Anthony's done here is taken something that was very dark and has still been able to take a well-exposed image by really extending the exposure. And often what that does is it creates a very soft lighting on something which isn't moving. So I actually think this is a really great job. So nice one, Anthony. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the subject matter. I don't think it's particularly interesting, but I do think your execution is really great. So nice work. Okay, so long exposure, Balaz Bognar. Um, what have we got here? So is this a bus, a tram? Can we see down here? I believe that's a tram that's moving. And over here, we've got the cars moving as well. I think it's an interesting photo. You've shot it so that it's square. Maybe that was for Instagram. Uh, white balance, it's a little green, I think. I would probably do that. So all I did there was I select the white balance dropper and I selected on the pavement, which would usually be a gray, which is the best color to select your white balance. Great example of a long exposure. What I like about this photo is that the long exposure has a start and end point in the middle here. So I think you've done a, a nice job here. I just think that the subject matter could be that little bit more interesting. Let's keep going. Oh, look at this. Bruno Car Cavinato, P Compass. Um, P oh, that might be where it is, P Compass, Cam Campos. Campos, where's that? Do you know? Nobody knows where it is. Uh, either way, let's see. Oh, I wonder where that is. But what I want to say here is really great work on your um, long exposure. You've managed to capture all the cars moving or vehicles moving and got lovely blur there. You've managed to get, because my guess is you'd have had to have a nice high. Um, f-stop so it means that everything's sharp even the grid that you're photographing through but you've not overexposed your sky which is a really really great job um i like this a lot i think maybe i would have liked to have seen the camera go through 
the the chain link fence so you just got that but then when I look at it actually I, I kind of like it that it's got that kind of a you, you see where you're shooting from you're shooting through something so this is a really great example what I like about this as well is you've got the yellow lights coming towards you the red lights going behind that's when these type of photographs really work because we've got a two-tone image um, great work Bruno nice let's keep going oh look at this okay so this one was obviously a very difficult photo. Um, I think you, your white balance is probably off. That's a very blue sky, but I don't think I'll be able to bring it back. I mean, maybe I have done a little bit by neutralizing that. If you look now, I think that does look more natural. So again, I just used the eyedropper, but I went straight on the blue clouds because the blue should be gray because or a little orange. That's what clouds are usually. Um, so let's go to where I got to. So I think it's nice. The problem is here, we have blown out our highlights of our headlights, which we'll always do a little bit, but it's just a little much. I also think, oh, have you done this handheld? Because it's not completely sharp. So that's something, something with long exposures is this. What you're doing with the shutter, the shutter goes like this. It opens, lets light in and it closes. That amount of time, if you were to move that shutter while it's open, then you're gonna get a blurry image. A long exposure, obviously, is open for longer, so you need to have it on a tripod, resting on a wall, something like that, unless you want to actually take a photograph with lots of movement in it. Um, so I think you've done a great job here, but you definitely need it to be on a tripod. Um, Brian Young, outside Brian Yang, outside of that, I think you've got a nice photo, and I think that the leading lines into the top third here. If we use the rule of third, so I'm going to click on this here. Oh, how do I get my thirds guide? Does anybody know? Does anybody know how to do that? Um, I forget how to do it. Inside crop. Uh, no, not that button. I don't know. But if you had split this into your thirds, I seem to have failed today. Sorry about that. Then that would be right in that in the intersection of the top two thirds. So really, really nice work. Um, I like it. Let's keep going. Oh, another cityscape with lots of movement. I love these photos. Um, let's see here. Deutsche Bank. That's DB. So my guess is this is in Germany. Chris S. Oh, in Berlin. Oh, you know what I was going to say? I was like, oh, is this in Berlin? This is near Potsdamer Platz. Um, I used to live in Berlin. I lived there for a year. I love that city. What an amazing city that is. Um, oh, I'm just going to put it out there. I just found on the image, it says right here, Bahnhof Potsdamer Platz. That means Potsdamer Platz Station. Oh, that makes me feel good that I realized that. That makes me happy. Uh, Chris S., um, great work, just because... It brings back lots of great memories of living in Germany. Um, I think you've done a really good job of this. This one is sharp, so that means that it probably was taken on a tripod or resting on a wall. Um, lots of streaks across here. Maybe it was a bus because it's quite high. You you've really have got your exposure nice for the lights. I think, though, that we could maybe lift it just a little bit like so. Yeah, I think that's done a really good job. And what I'm actually going to try on this one, it might not work. If you go into um, my pick presets just here, I'm actually going to go into urban film, urban means city, and I'm going to go for urban lights. And I clip, look at that. I love this preset that I made. This here, if I look at the beginning, which looks great, and then I look at the after, urban lights. This really gives this urban city feeling to this. And I also have another one, which is a crush which means that it crushes all the blacks. And this really, this, this is very popular on Instagram, actually, this kind of a look. Um, absolutely beautiful um, with that. So I think that's done really well. Guys, um, I'm going to plug my product here for a moment, just because why not? Um, I developed something called Pick Presets, which is um, an entire preset system, 10 different packs. In each pack, there's over 20 presets. That's 200 I think it's 300 and something presets altogether or something. Um, you can get it from photosincolor.com. You just head over there. You'll see on the homepage, it looks like this. There's a girl jumping. This is Jessica, my friend. Doesn't she look great? She's having a great time. And there's, 
the preset system, which means that you can go through and make lots of selections as you go through getting really, really creative. These are not presets that are meant to stunt your creative development. These are presets I created to engage you, enable you to be better and get really professional results. I spent a lot of time working on this and I'm very proud of it. And on top of this, I run a production company here in Vegas. We do loads of photo shoots and I use pick presets all the time. Every single photograph that we take goes through pick presets because it's really important. I'm gonna show you one element of pick presets right now, just on this image while we're here. As you can see down the side, there are all of these presets. So I can just go through and click, these are all the urban film ones. But what I can also do, let me just select the urban lights one that I really like. For a lot of people, there's certain elements within Lightroom that are hard to figure out. Those mainly are things like the tone curve. So I'm gonna look here, curves. And what you can do if you look on the curves on the right hand side here, if I click through any of these, all it's doing is changing the tone curve and nothing else. So what that means, I can select a preset and then just go through and make small alterations using things like the tone curve. I also have these smaller um, presets, so that like sectioned presets that go through everything from the basic panel, the tone curve, the hue, saturation, luminance, split toning, your details, like absolutely everything is in the side here. So let's quickly go in here to HSL Filmic. This is going to change only your hue, saturation, luminance. I'm going to show this on the side here. And as I click through here, you can see it's only going to be changing this panel here. Massively powerful. Um, so if you want to check that out, go over to photosincolor.com and it's on the homepage. Tell me what you think. Anyway, that's enough of plugging that for today. Um, I have to make money somehow, guys. So <laughs> let's keep going. Here we go. Ooh, long exposure. Christian Siddle. Let's have a quick thing. Sorry, I just needed to take this in for a moment. It's a long exposure, beautifully done on the waterfall. Really captured the motion of the waterfall coming in. I think that there's a little too much foreground on this. So if we're gonna come into the side here, I'm gonna crop a little bit of this foreground out because I just wanna see more, there you go, more of this waterfall. I always think you need a little bit more on the left-hand side of the waterfall. Really beautiful work. Obviously we've got some blur in the trees as well. Um, I think overall the image might be that little bit dark. So I'm gonna lift it up, but I'm gonna bring back my highlights. So I think that's a little nicer now before and after. Yeah, my guess is you've, you've used the clarity. I can tell that because of when I look over here at the rocks, the clarity when you, it makes it look more like this. I'm gonna say that you did use clarity. I'm gonna say that you shouldn't have done. Uh, I think you, you've gone too far with that. And also the white balance to my eyes seems a little off. I don't know what I can use to reset the white balance. Down here, these stones just look too brown. Oh, there we go. There we go. So I just brought the temperature to neg 21. Now if we look at the before and the after, I think we're a little bit more in a realistic space here. Because it also gives the water that blue feel, which I quite like because it is water. Um, okay, let's keep on keeping on. Wow, look at this. Great composition. Was that UPS downstairs? Could you just go and check on it? So sorry, we have UPS has just come downstairs um, and they just shouted, so we might need to sign for something. Uh, we can keep going though. Christian Litchfield, I think this is really great and conceptually I like this image. You've done really well with this because We've got the red lights on the left, the white lights on the right, and you've managed to get in the middle of the road. I'm not sure how safe you were to take this photo, but either way, really, really high contrast image, actually. Um, uh, sorry, high quality image. Lots of detail here, really beautiful job. You've also taken out most of the colors, which is what I like about this photograph. You've just left in those oranges and reds. Um, I would say that I think you've got too much down here. What I would maybe do, and this might not work, but I think this photo, we're gonna lose some of your quality, but I think this image here would actually work better as a landscape image. Everything good? FedEx. FedEx. What did FedEx drop off? 
Ooh, Santa came with a gift. How very exciting. So you see what we've done there. I've actually turned this portrait photo into a landscape and now I think it's a little bit more dynamic and more interesting. I'm able to do that because you've still got plenty of quality in this image. Um, let's see what camera you took this on. It's a high, high resolution camera for sure. Um, oh, it's a Sony M2. So if anybody else owns a Sony M2, um, I've never actually looked at any photographs from that camera, and I think that through that, I'm very, very impressed. So great work, um, Christian Litchfield. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna say that this is a long exposure on a very still night because the trees aren't moving at all, um, like like at all. Uh, and you've had to do that to get the stars in the sky. I just think that there's too much tree, not enough sky. Um, let's actually have a look at what your settings were. 15 seconds to get there. So great work to be able to pull those those stars out. But I think your white balance is, is quite a ways off here. Um, I don't quite, oh, there we go. It's a little bit back. Let's actually use the sky maybe. Yeah, there's a little bit of a challenge with this because you've got these and there's probably street lights which are lighting these up. Um, what I would have done here is just aim this camera way higher. More like this. So that we, we just get a little bit of the trees and more sky. Um, so nice attempt. I just think that the, the composition really let you down on this one. Oh, look at this. So initial thoughts on this. What a wonderful exposure, well captured. Daniel Sandberg, you tune in every week, I think. Really great work. Um, I like the pastel colors that you've captured back here. Park bench in some water. I get it. I think it's cool. Maybe it was a, an overflowed river or something. Um, so maybe, I was going to say I didn't like the subject matter, but actually because it's so perfectly... Um, in the center it actually makes this quite dynamic. It makes it quite a beautiful um, landscape image with a little, in fact, take, take the, the bench away and I think it would be less of a photograph. Therefore, the bench is important to have in there. So um, great work on deciding to keep that in. I like the pastels. So the long exposure here is how the lake looks so smooth. If you've ever gone to a lake to take a photograph and it's not a perfectly still lake, and then you wonder, mm, I keep getting all the choppy waves and everything in it and the ripples, and it just doesn't look as serene as I want it to. Set it on a tripod, give it a long exposure, and then that will blur out the water and give this beautiful effect. You've even got the, the reflection of the cloud shining down into it. You can see those just here. Um, great work, and I, I really like the edit. I like the pastels. Um, so nice work, Daniel. Great. Oh, okay. And did we have this the other day? No, we had Chicago Theatre, Radio City Music Hall. Um, isn't that where the Rockettes are currently playing? It is. I would want to see some photos of Rockettes, just because I'd, I'd like to see a photograph of the Rockettes. Can we bring up a photograph of the Rock Rockettes? Just because they are so... Has anybody seen the Rockettes? I haven't. One of my friends, I believe, was a Rockette for a while. Um, but also, it's just insane what they do. They do how many shows a week? They do like five shows a day throughout November and December. It's ridiculous. And they sell out constantly. Um, in New York, right? Um, it's just awesome. So we're going to bring up a photograph of the Rockettes. They're currently playing at the Radio City Music Hall. Um, either way, nice long exposure. You've got the cars driving by here. We're a little overexposed on the lights because of that, but you couldn't do anything about it. Um, I, I just feel like the composition of this is a little bit boring, to be honest with you. Like, okay, I get it. It's the Radio City Music Hall. That's beautiful. That's cool. But just smacking that smack bang in the middle... Um, not my biggest. I'm, a, I'm actually going to use that urban film on here again. See if we get anything different. Oh, yeah, we kind of do. This kind of looks more interesting to me now. It's got a little bit more texture to it. Look at the before and the after. That's just using my urban lights preset. Um, I feel like it's just given a little bit more feeling to it. Um, 
Let's bring up the Rockettes. Here we go, look at the Rockettes. Basically, the Rockettes, they do this thing where they, they, they perform every, it's only, it's only for the holidays, right? It's usually only for the holidays. It's loads of girls doing kick lines and all of that stuff. One of the most famous ones that they did, and maybe we'll bring this up, is where they're all, they all fall back. That's the Rockettes, right? So if you can find it, they're all um, like, not soldiers, what are they called, like puppets or whatever? They've got the black, they're like dolls, and they go back and they all fall back and it goes boom, 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 and they all fall down. It's absolutely awesome. We're gonna see if we can play that just because I think it's awesome. Um, Ray's gonna be on to that. Oh, oh, come back to me. We're on me already. Okay, I just realized Instagram. So usually, we, and then we're gonna do questions as well. Usually, we, um, I give you the option for what next week's theme is. Well, let me tell you this. Next week, we're not having a live show. Boom, boom, boom. We need one of those Instagram fil filters. <laughs> Thank you, sound effects over here from Kev. Um, you know that new Instagram filter that you do and you go, dun, dun, dun. We needed one of those then. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. We're not gonna do one next week. Why? Because it is 26th of December next Tuesday and that's Boxing Day. Uh, do you guys have Boxing Day in America? No. You, you guys don't have Boxing Day. Um, uh, it's the day after Christmas, it's a big holiday, it's important. Why is it called Boxing Day? I'm gonna tell you all right now, people used to think it's because they had boxing fights, it's not. It's because back in the Victorian ages and before that, the wealthy people would have the, on the 25th of December, they would have their big Christmas party. All of the servants and people that worked in the house, they would be working on the 25th so they didn't actually get to celebrate. Boxing Day was the day that the owners of these houses and stately homes and everything would box up a load of food and gifts and give it to the workers and they would have the holiday on the 26th. That there is why Boxing Day is called Boxing Day. Oh, that feels good to say that. Also, did I get that right? Did I just make it up? <laughs> I believe that is why it is. Um, so we're not going to have one next week. We're going to have one the week after, which is on January the 2nd. Um, and we have a theme. What theme are we going to do? Holiday photos. So all it is, over the next two weeks, everyone's going to be getting together with their family and their friends. You're going to be going to parties. You're going to be going to all sorts of different things. I want you to focus and get a great holiday photo. That might be a holiday portrait, or it might be, I don't know, a, a photographs of your gifts, but I want you to be artistic, okay? Not just like, here's a snapshot of our Christmas tree. Um, instead, I want it to be really interesting, something which really says holiday, like holiday. And if you're in the UK, holiday means something different to us, that means vacation. So um, holidays, like the Christmas period. Um, it doesn't matter what you're celebrating in this period, but like really show it off. Um, Makes sense? Okay, so that's why we're not gonna do a vote on Instagram this week, but we are gonna get back into that next year. But what we are going to do is where I post one of my long exposures on Instagram and you guys get to go and critique me. Do we have the video of the Rockettes? Yeah. So we have a video of the Rockettes, and they're amazing. I'm actually gonna be posting this on Instagram while we play this video. So whenever we're ready, we're gonna see the Rockettes doing the fall things. I think it's amazing. My first year as a Rocket when I learned the Soldier Fall, I remember Look at that. it was so hard for me to figure out. We learn it six girls at a time first. Six of us go up and then we add on and we do 12 girls at a time and then we'll add on a little more and we'll do 18 girls, which is half the line. And every time it just feels a little bit different and everything moves a little faster and then eventually we get to doing it with all 36 women at the same time. It starts off by having somebody rock up on their heels and start to go back and you raise your hands up. Okay, and we are back here. I'm about to post this onto, I don't know why I said we're back here. You all know that. That's me trying to communicate with my guys. And um, so I don't know if you like that with the Rockettes. They were pretty cool, huh? Um, I love that move. Okay, Kev, we're gonna come to you and we're going to go for questions while I post this to Instagram. Awesome, awesome. All right, so from Helen Jenkins, something um, a little more personal. What well, do I like photographing people? I absolutely love to photograph 
people. I like to get somebody in the studio or on location and communicate with them, go through what their vision is. Because as an artist, sometimes it's about me, right? I want to take this type of photograph. What I really love though as an artist is going to the model, the client, whatever, and saying, hey, what do you really want? Like, what's your mood board? What, what, what do you want to achieve creatively? That's what's really important. And then being able to deliver that, that's what I really like to do. So there you go. Any more questions? Well, Ed uh, Visnor, I'm sorry if I messed up your name. He wants to know if you can wear an ugly Christmas sweater next show. Oh, ugly Christmas sweater? Um, I might go and, I think I have one. I think I'm, I might even go and put it on today. Oh, I gotta go. I'll see if I can get it on before the end of the show today. I'll see what I can do. Um, sorry, I'm just still trying to do. I'm not gonna leave a comment on this. It's just gonna say long exposure. Um, what do I usually write on this? Critique. This is taking me forever. Critique my photo. This is awful. Sorry, guys. Hashtag pick live. I don't know. Hashtag pick live. That'll do me. Whoa, there's over a thousand posts for hashtag pick live. Did you guys know that? I don't even know. Should I be looking at, are you guys hashtagging pitch pick live on things? If you are, I should probably be following that hashtag and then posting your stuff. Okay, I'm gonna start checking out the hashtag pick live and I'm gonna start posting some of your stuff on my Instagram. Um, so that's that. Um, any more questions? Okay, great. So let's jump in back over here. I'm gonna, we've got a lot of photos today, so I'm gonna bust through a lot more photographs. Um, oh, look at this one. David Collette, welcome back. You tune in absolutely every week. You're a star for doing that, and thank you so much for all your thumbs up, your likes and comments. It really does mean a lot. Long exposure, look at this. This is a, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna take the exposure and whack it all the way up. I sometimes do this so I can see what else is in the image. Okay, so we have a house with some trees and I don't know what is coming out. Maybe, maybe this was David coming out of his house with a head torch on or a torch on to check on his own long exposure because this is a very long exposure. This is the sky. This is the earth rotating with all of the stars in the sky. Very hard to achieve, very well done. It almost looks like a Catherine wheel. Do you guys have Catherine wheels? Yep, made that up. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> so a Catherine wheel is from, from like, fire, it's a firework. It's one that you put on a post and then it spins. Oh, uh, no. What would you call it? A firework on a wheel that spins. Okay, you see, <laughs> you Americans. <laughs> it almost looks like a firework on a wheel that spins. Um, or Catherine Wheel. Um, I, I think this is really great. I'm actually gonna see how long exposure this is. I don't know if... No, 30 seconds, not possible. Not possible. Um, David, Colette, I believe you're watching, you're usually watching. Could you let me know how long this took? Because 30 seconds does not seem long enough. Because um, the Earth doesn't move that fast to be honest. So we'll see what happens there. This is more like an hour, um, but maybe that's the, the camera will only in its exit data write 30 seconds. But really, really great work. Nice attempt um, at this. If I was gonna change anything, I would have not walked across it down here, or maybe done a composite image of just the sky and then that down here. Either way, it's great. Oh, okay. Another long exposure waterfall. Few things with this. Way too dark. Let's really bring this out. Okay, so before and the after, you see now we're already somewhere else. David Rogers, Davy Rogers, um, Fallen Angel. So I guess this is the name of this waterfall. Beautiful job, really great work on capturing the uh, waterfall coming down here. I love the, the green of the trees. Now what I like to do with green leaves is, um, oh, I need to go to the greens. I often like to just change the color towards the yellows a little bit and then pull down the saturation. For me, that usually makes it that little bit more realistic. Um, it's not quite as, as, it doesn't pop out too much. It doesn't detract from what we're doing. And I'm not the biggest fan of vignettes. 
In fact, I'm not a fan at all of vignettes, but I'm gonna use it in this photo because the focus is in the center. There we go, let's look at the before and the after. Now we're starting to bring in some focus. Great work on the long exposure. I think that you could have just exposed it higher. So you could have gone even longer or lifted your ISO or something like that. Um, nice work though. Brandon Mooney. Um, I believe you tune in a lot as well. Oh, look at this, two bridges. Um, very misty. Uh, you've got the street lights here. My guess is it's over water, but you can still see the ripples in the water. Um, so I'm not quite sure. What are we at? One, maybe eight, eight seconds? 20 seconds on that one. Wow, so the water still managed to get the ripples here. Um, I like the photograph, I like the composition, I think it's interesting. I just think feel like you needed a car or two on both sides. And also it's, it's just lost some texture to this image. It's not quite level. Um, and let's come up here, let's make it a little bright. Yeah, unfortunately with this image, I just feel like it, it just doesn't have the right energy to it, unfortunately. Um, Again, I'm going to go into this urban lights because I love it with this type of thing. And I think that's worked really well. And then I'm going to go in here uh, for daylight. I'm going to go for morning coffee and see how that looks. Oh, I like that too, actually. Lots of color going on. I like the pur purples in this image. Um, there's just a lot of colors and a lot of things going on. I don't feel like there's enough focus on there, Brendan Mooney. But thank you for submitting. Ooh, pensive, Don Manley, pensively thinking and looking at a glow worm. What is that? Is that just like a little LED light? I think that this image is, it, it's a candle. Oh, it's a big candle. Okay, I don't quite know what's going on here. I'm not going to lie. Um, so I, I think it's supposed to be a thought, a thoughtful image. You know, somebody thinking. But I feel like it's underexposed, way too contrasty. I can't pull out any detail in this. So overall, I'm not quite sure what's happening. Um, and it's, it's hard to really discern what's going on. So therefore, I think that needed to be a little bit more work done on the the thought process on the composition of this image. And also, you got a big reflection off the watch down here, which is kind of taking quite a lot of focus from the candle here. Um, but thank you for sending in, Dan. Oh, okay, so this is one of the challenges that we get here. What we have is great work on a long exposure. We've got the beautiful tail lights from the car. We've also managed to get the stars up here, which is kind of perfect. But the problem is, is the headlights from the car has blown out the main image. So what I would have probably done would be to go for a, sh um, a higher shutter speed, uh, sorry, a higher f-stop so that we could make this darker and lift this out in post-production. So the whole image would have looked darker. We'd have just taken the brush, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So let's say it was really dark like this. We can't get rid of this because it exists now, it's overexposed. But this is what I would do, and then I would have taken the exposure and lifted it up, and then I'd have just painted the sky back in and painted that back in down there. It's basically what I would have done. Um, Filippo Missio, thank you so much, and I can see that's what you've had a problem with. And also, you've got another car in the image, that's just a shame. You could have maybe tried to go around the next bend to take a photograph so you didn't get that car. Here we go. Ooh! So I like photos like this, Gav, Gabor Silviu. Um, what we have here is a beautiful, um, I don't know if this is a, a wall with old posters or something on it, either way, um, maybe it's just a theater poster wall, either way, it's really nice. And then we've got somebody, the subject here, walking through, looking at them, showing motion. What I like about this is clearly they are moving down each one of these posters, looking at them, it tells more of a story having this long exposure. One thing that I'm not in love with though is it's not black and white. 
it's you've got rid of all the colors but you've left some color or you've just added something to the tone curve for me it's black and white make it black and white just go black and white don't don't keep in other colors i'm going to boost the exposure and i'm going to bring my blacks down so now if you look at the before and the after now we have a lot more color um a, a lot more um, interest in this image but um, really really great work Guillermo Aleman um, oh I like this photo oh you sent in this this is coming twice okay that's fine um, let's have a look at this so long exposure we've got the waves that are coming in splashing down we've got the piece of um, wood I don't know what this is, is it, oh that's what's, what type of tree is that one of those trees, isn't it, that has the roots that go in. Maybe it's just finding growth. I don't know. I'm making that up. Um, mangrove. It's, it's, it's like mangroves. Um, I really like this photograph. And because it looks the way that it does, it almost looks painterly. It looks like it's almost painted. And I like that. My guess is we've got two seconds here. Oh, half a second. Oh, because the water's moving fairly fast. I think this is perfect. If you'd have gone longer than that, what would have happened would be it would have all got a little bit too blurry. My guess is you tested that a lot, but that there is a great example of using just a little bit of a long exposure to create a real painterly feeling. And I think it's really beautiful. Yeah, just comment in. He said this was after Hurricane Irma. This is after Hurricane... Which Hurricane? Herma. Herma. Wow. Um, well, thank you so much for sending this in. And, you know, my guess is this is actually something which is broken off somewhere else and, and come in after the hurricane. Um, but it is a beautiful photograph. So great work, um, Guillermo. Uh, nice work. Mm, so this is a little bit like we had before. So, look, let, let's be honest about this one for a second, Hector. Um, your composition, what's going on? Like, you, you've got a big pole in the middle of your photograph. I get it that you had the, the um, chain link fence in front of you, but the pole, you could have moved a foot to the right and then you could have had the whole thing. Maybe it's because you wanted to be bang center, but in you trying to achieve bang center, I feel like the main feature of this is this. This is the main feature, is a big blur. So again, composition. However, let me just show you if we were to crop this like so. If we were to add this as a crop, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. But if we were to do something more like this, now this already is a way more interesting photo. But again, I don't, I, I just think there's too much chain link fence. You needed to get your lens closer to that fence. I've taken photographs like this before. In fact, the photograph that I've just posted on Instagram in Vegas, go check it out. This is in, go go take a look at this. This photograph was taken through chain link fence on the strip. What I had to do was I had to get my lens right up, right up. So basically you could, the reason why the image is slightly darker on the right hand side, that's actually from the chain link fence itself. Um, also, if you're wondering about that photograph, the fireworks are fake. I added that afterwards. Um, I didn't realize until 30 seconds before I went live today that I was supposed to be posting an image. So I went and got this one from, uh, I run a stock uh, photo site, so it's one of my photographs. That I just went on that, that site and, and downloaded it. Um, so if you're wondering, yes, uh, it is fake. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to get lots of comments on that, but I will read through those later. So please go check out my Instagram, Photos in Color. Here we go, let's keep on going. Long exposure here. Uh, okay, so again, I, I, I might be way off on this, but why is our main focus some bike racks? We've got a beautiful church in the background. Obviously got a beautiful street with trees, yet our focus here is from Hen Henrik Berglund. Uh, I just feel like it, it lacks interest, you know, but I do like the fact that we've got like the long exposures here. So that adds interest, but I just feel like you, you just put this thing in my face that was probably made a year ago, as opposed to like beautiful old trees and a church and all those things. So really think about what is the subject matter of your photos. Here we go. Oh, 
Look at that. I love this photo. This is beautiful. Long exposure. You've got the solitary crane just hanging out there. Uh, I think it's beautiful. You've managed to get the, the river or the sea or the lake, whatever this is, completely smooth. The wonderful reflection. You've managed to even get the tip of it um, to be in the image. I think you've done a wonderful job here. Ian Williams, great. The one thing that I don't like, but this is personal preference, is there's a bit of a blue tone into it. I would have, I, I would have taken all color out and made it really black and white. That's just my personal preference. Um, but this is a great example of a long exposure and the composition is nothing short of perfect. I love it. Okay, so this here, Javier Gallardo, Gallardo, um, on a lake, it's got some castle thing at the end, I don't know what that is. Um, I like the mist, I like the mood, I like this, it's kind of dark, it's eerie, um, it's quite blue. Um, if I correct the white balance, I think it's going to ruin it. Yep, it did, I actually like the blue tone, I think it's a little bit too much. But this, I, I like it, um, I just think that it's just a moody photo. I don't know if it really fits into the long exposure perfectly well. What was this taken at? 20 seconds. So it most definitely is a long exposure. And maybe that's how we've got that beautiful mist. So I take it back. I think it does fit with the theme. And I think you've done a really good job. I think it lacks a little contrast. I think I'd want to do something a little bit more like this. Let me go in here. And then I'm going to take the vibrance down. In fact, I'm going to make it black and white. There you go. Before and after. I think now we've got a little bit more of a feeling to that image. Um, so nice. Joey Rimsky. Okay, so we're looking here. Another long exposure. We've got more traffic going. It's a little, little um, uh, bland as a photo. The colors kind of aren't doing it for me. There's not much color over here. I do like it that it's of an overpass. Uh, you know, you got the back of this sign here. I think it's a great example of a long exposure. I just don't think it's the world's most interesting photo. So let's actually see, because the colors, if the colors don't do it for me in an image, what I would usually do is get rid of it. So didn't like the color, so I made it black and white. That's a, one of my rules that I like to follow. Um, and then I'm just going to, okay. That to me now is a little bit more of an interesting photo. Um, but I just feel like it just need a little bit more work on bringing out those colors, maybe getting lower to the ground. But you're on a bridge, so you don't have much choice. Here we go, Josh ooh, Joshua Fritz. Beautiful. Long exposure, you've managed to blur out the clouds. You've even, so therefore you've got a blur on the flag, which I actually like in this image. My guess is the colors you've added in post. So you've added this very, um, what's it called, pastel color. Not the biggest fan of it, but this, I think it, it does actually work. I think you've done a pretty nice job of it. So um, great work. I think I would just knock off the bottom a little bit. I think I'd just go like this. I would just bring it up that little bit to give a little bit more focus to the sky. Um, nice work. Oh, look at that. There's a pristine sunset right after the sun has gone down. We've got details of the buoy in the, in the water. We've got the front here just rippling. It's almost like it's a tablecloth just laying over the front of the beach there. This is a beautiful, peace, calming photo. Like really, very nice work. Um, what, what are we on here, one second? Two seconds. Um, great. I, I, I think it's great. The, the color's pretty strong on this, and I think I like it because of that. So nice work. Okay, so I see what we've got, what we're trying to do here. We're, we're in the middle of a bridge, and it's a, um, uh, what's it called? A suspense, suspension bridge, which is what all those cables are. So those are really pulling out almost as like some kind of a creature. Um, I like it, but I think that it's just a little boring. Actually, 
is a, is a photo. Let's, let's say I'm gonna use sweet, uh, some of sweetness on this and bring the exposure down. Mm, what have we got inside art film? I wanna get a little arty with this one. I don't know what we've got, if there's anything. Ooh, there you go. So I, I, I feel like I, I get it, it is a long exposure. We've seen lots of these today. It's on the theme and I like it, but I, I feel like it's just a bit boring. Like if you had some people walking down the middle here, then it would have some interest. Oh, this on the other hand looks, looks like it's a model. Looks like it's a model city. Eddie C, Eddie C long exposure, starlights. Um, I'll bring this up a little. That there looks like some like 1960s model of a town. Um, Oh, what's buildings? This is in Singapore. No, it's not. Where's this? What's this building? Is it the lion here? Is this Singapore? Eddie, if you're here, tell me. Um, I think you've done a wonderful, wonderful job of getting this city perfectly sharp. Singapore. See, it is Singapore. Boo, that's two for two today. I'll take it, thank you. Um, <laughs> Minus those, hey, hey, leave the fairy lights out of it. <laughs> leave it out. Um, I've been to Singapore twice. I think it's beautiful. Um, really, really beautiful city. And what are we at here? We're probably going to be at um, six seconds. Yeah, I literally wouldn't change a thing about this photo. You nailed it. Nailed it. Or maybe I would. I changed the exposure, didn't I? <laughs> but um, not really necessary. Great work. Okay, so another photograph here. I mean, my focus has come straight to here to the dirty bit of the bridge. So therefore, I would have just cut that out, just got rid. Uh, lack of color. I, I don't think it's particularly sharp. It was handheld. I think that this photograph needs some work. Um, definitely put it on a tripod. Try and get more color into this. You see we've ruined, we've got rid of all the colors over here in the city. I'm sure that that had lots more vibrance into it. So I think a little bit more, maybe an even longer exposure here with a larger f-stop, meaning let in less light so this wouldn't become overexposed and you could have got lots more detail back here from the city. Um, nice idea, a little bit more work needed um, James Mackey, Brooklyn Bridge. Nice. Ooh, okay. So, Kadir Asraf Madbub, Mad, 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 Mad Bob? Mad, Mad Bob. Um, if you've been watching this show for a while, you know exactly what I'm going to say. It's going to be black and white. Make the blacks black and the whites white. <laughs> so, I'm going to lift up this here and I'm going to pull this down here. Okay. Now we're a little bit more interesting and also we're not quite straight, I don't think. It's a little off. Um, outside of that, before and after, I think it's a, a, a pretty nice cityscape photo. We've got lots of motion. We've got the one car changing lanes here. Um, I think it's interesting. I just would have liked to have seen the tops of the buildings. It's a little bit focused on the road, but great example of long exposure photography. Okay, I'm gonna bust through these now. Rick Das, nice work uh, on this. A few issues that I see though. One of the main features here is some scaffolding, um, which is what I don't love. It looks like this is overexposed or a little bit flat maybe. Um, and by flat, I mean what you probably did was you took your highlights down, your whites down, your shadows up and your blacks up like this. It's like a fake HDR. That is what I think you did. And I think you actually need to do a little bit of the opposite to make this come to life. A little bit more like this just to bring that back a little bit, highlights up, blacks down. Um, I do like it that you've got the motion blur of the people. I just don't know that it's interesting enough as a photograph. I don't really, I mean, are they all going somewhere? Maybe they're all going to this building at the end. But then if that's the case, that building at the end is overexposed, so it's hard to see. So I think you needed some work on the exposure there. Oh, look at that. That's where I want to spend winter just for one night, because it'll get really cold. But um, I like this a lot. You managed to get the detail in the sky. You managed to get the reflection down here from the moon. I don't know if this is the moon or what. Um, 
It's a shame that we've got the color over here from the setting sun or the moon. Uh, so we're gonna get rid of that in a minute. But I love the fact that it's obviously warm inside. This is a beautiful photo. I would want to lift it up. Just, I wanna see more of it. And then we're gonna do here. So you see we've got the colors. All we need to do for that, take the brush, and we're gonna go into double click effects so that it resets it all. And I'm just gonna take my saturation down. And just by painting this over, what'll happen is it'll keep all the detail in everything, but it's just going to basically get rid of all of the colors just there. And now when I come out, that now isn't pulling my focus. Now it's just adding to the effect of the image. Outside of that, if we look at the before and the after, I think we've just made it come to life a little bit more, but Locker Mercer, absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't know what your Instagram is. It says at Instagram. My guess is you're not, you are not Instagram. So I don't know what your Instagram is. Um, let's keep going. Okay, uh, long exposure. We've obviously got some lights coming out here. Overexposed, unfortunately, on the building. So I'd have gone for a higher f-stop and then even longer exposure to capture more of it. Um, I like it. I just don't love it as an image. I think that the... Uh, the colors, I don't like the yellows, to be honest with you. The, the yellow down there, um, I'm not a fan of. So therefore, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the yellows and I'm gonna change it to reds. You see what I did there? I just took the yellows and I moved it into the red area. And then the blue, because uh, the house is doing the sky as well, so I'm gonna keep that where it is. And then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna turn down the saturation of everything else, but the reds, uh, sorry, sorry, the yellows and the blues. And now I feel like that's a little bit more of an interesting photo, a little bit more dynamic. Keep going. What is this? I don't know. This is a car driving, and I guess the long exposure of what's happening on the outside going through a tunnel. I mean, that, that's a pretty interesting photo. I think that there's a little bit too much of the car and not enough of the tunnel. I mean, if you were trying to sell Q Music or whichever car this is, then that would be a quite a cool product shot. Um, I kind of like it. It's kind of interesting. Let's keep going. I'm going to whip through loads now. I, I always I spend too long at the beginning. I'm going to try and get better at that. Long exposure for some boats. I like this as a landscape. This has got so many levels. We've got something in the foreground. We've got the background back here. I feel like the foreground though just needs uh, to be lifted out a little bit more. There you go. Um, nice long exposure. We've got the blur on the water. So nice work, Moritz. Mortz. Oh, so this is kind of interesting. This is traffic jams and then some cars moving over this side. Um, How bizarre. This is in India, but that's Big Ben. Is there a miniature Big Ben in India? That is very strange. I've never seen that. Um, however, quite an interesting photo that there's only some blurred elements in it, so I think you've done a great job there. Overexposed. So this here, you see it's just a big, white, overexposed area here. Um, you needed to lift your f-stop up to make that a better image. Oh, so I, this is interesting. We're on a pier and we've blurred out the water. That's the long exposure on this one, Oliver Haydell. Um, I, I do actually like it. I feel like the, the sky is, is a little overbearing. Uh, it's a little, little heavy. I don't know how you'd get that because the sky's the sky. Maybe on a different day it would have been a little bit of a clearer day. I don't know. Uh, let's see this. Ooh, this is Berlin. Did I get this? No, it might not be Berlin, but I know that they have, this is a Ferris wheel, which is turning, um, and which is how they've got all of these lights, like a Catherine wheel, but a Ferris wheel. <laughs> Give me that look. Um, great work on this. I like the exposure on everything. Um, Oh, 
Paris. This is in Paris. Um, I believe, because it's Galleries Lafayette, which is the, the, the Lafayette, um, like, shops. I, I think you've done a really, really great job of a, of a long exposure. Hard to do with that many moving parts, but you've achieved it well, so nice work. Okay, so I like this. Uh, what were these cars doing? This is, this is not cars that keep in lanes. Or maybe it's just a very long exposure, so you've got too many cars. Because basically what's happened is here, there's just, it's become a bit of a mess. Uh, so maybe too long of an exposure. Um, if the cars are going really fast, you could have done a two second as opposed to an eight second exposure on that one. Keep going. Whoa, is that the moon? I don't get it. Is that, I don't get it. How did that, how did you do that? Rick Das, are you there? Is that, you've set up a really long exposure and you've captured the moon going across the sky? That's my guess, so you may have done that, but where are the stars? I'm confused. However you've done it, five seconds, no, five seconds, the moon moves faster than that. Oh, you moved the camera you panned the camera for like three seconds to get it moving. Then you left it for the last two to make sure that you got the end of the moon sharp. I have no idea how you did this. Whatever it is, it's, it's kind of weird and cool. It's weird. I don't know what you do with that photo, but it's... Yeah, he said he panned the uh, camera. He said, I have stars, but he panned the camera. Brilliant. I said no stars. Yeah, There's no, there were no stars. I've never seen a photograph like this, Rick. This is the weirdest photo. It just looks weird, it looks like an alien. Uh, it's really, really well worked for being inventive. Um, sale Zagaratate. <laughs> I'm so sorry, that just came out. Za, Zarezad. Zarezade, I wasn't far off. A little tongue twisted in the middle of that one. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, it's a long exposure. I just don't think it has that much interest. Uh, it's just some lights going across the screen on a road. I think that photographs like this, we want to really see where you are. What, what, why are you taking a long exposure? It, th this is just an example of long exposure photography, which is great, but I think you can work a little bit harder to try and be a little bit more interesting with it. Oh, look at this one. Oh, okay. So this is done using um, those metal... The metal yeah, what are they called? You buy like, like fiber that you light. Basically, you, you get some material that's made out of metal. You tie it to a bit of string. Steel wool. Steel wool. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You light it and then you spin it around. And then as the steel one wool flies off, you capture the long exposure. So... Number one, awesome. Number two, you had people standing there while you did that? That is absolutely ridiculous. Um, good for those guys to stand still for that long. Um, I think it's great. Sebastian Lubinsky, you're here every week. You're getting really creative with your photography. You're somebody that's challenging yourself, and I like that. So everybody that's watching this show, go out and challenge yourself to take better photos. And I feel like Sebastian is really pushing himself. I don't know that I would want this to be me and Rosie here. I think this would scare the shit out of Can I say that on YouTube? Scare the whatever out of me. Um, but even so, you got them to do it and great work. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a little over, I oh, don't know, maybe it's, per in fact, I think you nailed it. Good work, intense. Oh, well, what do we got here? A nice cityscape over some water, I think it's great. Again, too much yellows. What I would do in lots of these photographs is I'd just come into the yellows and move it towards the reds. What it does to a city is it just makes it look a little bit more exciting with the exposure. So that there before and after, I think it looks, it's changed a little bit. Great work of a long exposure. I like it. Oh, so I wanna say this is the Arc de Triomphe, but it's not, this is in Rome. Oh, please let me get this one right. That'll be three for three. I'm wrong, aren't I? I have no idea. 
See, see if Pontus is here. I want to say Rome, but uh, who knows? It's probably in Greece. It's Greece. It's in Greece. I've changed my mind. It's in Greece. Um, either way, I like the blurs on the side, and I like that there's a motorcycle in the middle underneath the tower. I think you've done a great job. I think that there's a little bit too much on the vignetting, but as a photograph, it's got drama. And I, this is, if anybody's wondering how they did the colors on this, my guess is, I don't get to see it, but they took the saturation down on everything down here in the saturation, like so. Then all they did was they brought back the yellows, they brought back the oranges, and they brought back the reds. That's probably what they did. Yeah, they maybe even put some blue in back in there. Great work, though. Nice. Shooting star? Is that what we're looking at? Um, I mean, yeah, you took loads... Yeah, okay, you captured the shooting star. I, I think that's, that's great. But as, as a photograph, not the world's most interesting. You would want to be way tighter on the shooting star, but then that's kind of impossible to get. However, can anybody see the star thing? What are they called? Star constellation. constellation. That there is Orion's belt. Three dots here, Orion's belt. This is the dot at the top of his head. This here is his sword. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe that's Orion's belt. So if I got that wrong, please let me know. Uh, let's see. Oh, look at this. Okay, so usually I wouldn't like this whole border here, you know, that this is part of the bridge. But I actually think this has added a lot to this photo. It's got this, like, snowy, wintry feeling without there being any snow. I think this is fantastic. Brooklyn Bridge, right? That's Brooklyn Bridge with those things. Yeah, that's Brooklyn Bridge. Um, I used to live there as well, guys. I used to live in Greenwich Village. That was a beautiful place to live. Um, super cool. Look at that. Um, I, I think you've done a great, great job. In a way, my initial thought is, oh, let's crop out some of the bottom bit here to bring in some focus up here. But then, I don't know, there's, there's, something, there's something that you've captured with this angle that I really like. So, nice work, Simon Cortez-Suisse. No oh, idea how you say your name. Ooh, Swapnil Tuari. Ooh, I like this. So this is, what is this? Just two vehicles? One vehicle, maybe, doing this whole loop around and going up here where, with blue lights on the back. I don't know how you did this, but it's, it's almost perfect, which is cool. I don't like the yellow lights. I'm just going to go and change this to orange. I'm just going to show you. I just feel like it just looks better like that. Um, look here. It just looks better <laughs> in my, to my eyes anyway. I like the composition. I think it's interesting. I think it's really, really nice. Oh. Oh, look at this, long exposure. This is taken, um, oh no, it's not. You fooled me. The sky is fake. Tell me if you're here, but I believe, no, the sky isn't fake. I believe that the sky is not fake. It's real. However, it says that it was done in one one hundredth of a second. There's no way that the sky moves that fast. So maybe the exit date is incorrect on this, or maybe you did it in post-production, you moved the sky. But um, I love this type of photography. I just don't know if you actually did it in camera from your exit. I feel like you may have done it in post, which is no problem. It's still a beautiful photo. Oh, look at this. So it's a long exposure, but it hasn't helped your photograph as opposed to much. You've, you've made the water a little softer. Um, which is what I talked about before, to avoid the ripples and the hardness of water. Um, so I, I do like, I like the leading lines, the V across the middle, I think is really, really great work. Um, I like the sky, the pastels and everything, really nice. Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to push fast now. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got lots of trucks on a road. I don't really get it as a photo. It's, it's a good example of long exposure. But as a subject, it's not particularly interesting. Uh, I like this. It's a little dark, and your 
your long exposure, I don't think is long enough. It's three seconds. I think you could have made it eight seconds. That would have lifted up the brightness over here and those would have been perfect long lines. Um, okay, nice, but um, longer. If you're gonna do a long exposure, go longer, longer on the exposure. Oh, who's this, Raymond Tripp? Um, this is great. So let's have a look at this. This is um, a little bit like with a steel wall. This is lights on the end of, so, oh, here we go, you can see it here. These are LED lights on these poles. Is that, am I right? String, yeah. They're like string with LED lights at the end. So it's great. So what I like about this is you managed to light your face. How did you do that? We exposed for like 15 or so seconds and then just one random splash of light. Oh, you did? You had a, a, a an external flash. You can see it in the bottom left. Ah, okay. So that's a pretty complex photo. Let's come to me for a second. We're going to talk about that. So um, this is Ray, one of my staff here. I'm going to move over. I'm not in the middle. I don't know what happened. Am I in the middle? I am now. Um, so basically, what he's done here is a long exposure. So that's how we've got all the spirals. And then off the side, he's got a flash, so a a speed light. And then that's fired very bright poof, once, and that's how he's managed to light himself and kept it sharp. If he didn't do that, what would happen is he would have been moving while he was spinning the things, and he would have been all blurred out. So um, that's a pretty complex photo um, that you managed to do there. Um, Craig Foster Photography? Mm -hmm. Is that you on Instagram? No, that's a buddy of mine. That's the guy that took the photo. Yeah. Got you. I was like, wait a minute, that's not your real name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I think this is a really great job. Like, that, that's, that's hard to do. And you managed to do it, so nice work. He's here in the studio, so nice work. <laughs> um, ooh, look at this. Long exposure on the clouds, but also the way that this sand has been pulled across with the wind, that almost looks like a long exposure as well. So it's made this image look really, really moody. So nice work. Uh, Kev, do we have any more questions? No. no, we don't? Okay, great. Let's just quick, quick look on here. We've got another, these balls here with the spirals. Exactly the same thing as we talked about, steel wall or what Ray did with the LED lights. You can't see the people because they've been moving all the time. Uh, but they are, they'll be basically inside those. Is this a carousel? That is exciting. That is an exciting photo. I wish that you'd have got the whole carousel in it. If you'd have just got a landscape, you'd have got the full width of this. But as a long exposure, it's exciting and it's really good. So nice work. More steel wool. And something behind you. What is that? Disco ball? That is the biggest disco ball. <laughs> that can't be a disco ball. What is that? I have no idea what that is behind you, but it's cool. And there's a lot of steel wool. So I love those things with steel wool. The problem is they're always, they always look the same. Somebody's standing there spinning something and getting stuff flying out. It's really cool, but it's not the most exciting. Oh, city um, Bangkok, city of life. So this here, um, I love this because this sells Bangkok to me. You know, we know where we are because it tells us in big writing at the top. But then also we've got a beautiful sky up here and then we've got all of these lights and it's, it's kind of crazy underneath. And honestly, I've been to Bangkok a number of times and that's exactly what the city is like. It is, it is beautiful, but it is a crazy beast. Um, and I think you've captured this wonderful. You could sell this to the city of Bangkok as an image. I think it's great. Nice work. Um, who are you? Let me do a shout out. Ping. <laughs> that's it. Ping, 16 milliseconds. That, that is your name. Okay, Ping, 16 milliseconds. Um, what do we got here? Ooh. What is going on here? So this is a long exposure of a beautiful sky. You, you also managed to capture, I don't know if it's a plane or if it's a shooting star, a few of those. But what is this? That is some kind of a, is that one of those light sticks? Light painting, it says light painting. Light painting, it's one of those light sticks, right? Those LED sticks, very cool. 
It's a bunch of ghostly figures walking down a bridge. I mean, conceptually, you did a great job. And I like it that your photography name is Beyond Life Photography. That um, kind of fits pretty well there. So nice work, Robert Wiggers. Uh, nice landscape, long exposure, but I don't know where to look. There's like trees with trees behind and a white sky. I think that the composite, you needed to get a way shallower depth of field to bring some interest to that tree. Um, okay, I'm gonna do these last four. I think we probably have had more, more, more uploaded, but we're just gonna do these last few here. Um, oh, I like this photograph. The colors are a little too crazy for me. So when colors become like this, when I've got reds and yellows and blues and everything, what I often do is I just mute them all get rid of them all, and then I start putting them back in, and I'll try and only bring a few in. But I don't like it like this. I don't like those black and white photographs that are like that. Um, so we need the blue for the sky. Um, uh, okay, so if we take the yellows, and if we push the yellows to the reds, then that's gonna match these down here. So now what we've got, this is a very crazy image with lots of colors, and now what we've got is a, an image which isn't one of those black and whites with a few colors. Now it looks like it's those colors. However, we've just brought in specific ones um, to that. Let's come back here. Oh, no, I pressed delete. That was not the button I wanted to press. Um, I think this is a really, really beautiful cityscape, for sure. Let me bring the blacks down on this. That's the contrast. There you go. Nice work, Tristan. Really great. Oh, you guys are, I'm gonna go and try and take some of these photographs of the ocean. It looks like a painting. Look at that. They've just taken the photograph right when the wave's coming down. We've got the rocks perfectly sharp. We've got the sunset captured perfectly. Quite a lot of post-production on color here, but I don't mind it. It looks, Perfect. 0.7 of a second. Um, Valentin Diakonu. Um, I, I'm in love with this photograph. I hope you printed that and put it on a wall. It's great. Okay, another one of those street ones. I like it, just a little overexposed on the lights, a little too dark on the darks. Um, I can't get any detail out. Therefore, it doesn't have any, any drama to it. It's just a line of lights. Oh, Jeff Barker, we're gonna end on this one because it is the end now anyway. But you've taken one of those ones that we've just been looking at with the ocean and you've managed to put a swimmer in there. So, one thirteenth of a second, my guess is you're tracking the swimmer with the camera then you've taken the photograph right when they've come up. And you know what? That means that nothing in this image is sharp. Nothing at all is sharp in this image. But I don't care. Because what you've captured is feeling, you've captured motion, you've captured drama, you've captured action. This is a great example of long exposure photography using an unconventional way to capture something which is really hard to get from a still image. You captured motion from sport in a still image. So Jeff Bark, I'm gonna end on that one today. You have done an amazing job. Okay, so remember, next Tuesday, we do not have a live show, it's Boxing Day. I've told you what that means. <laughs> um, 2nd of January, we are, hey, have you just put on a Santa hat? Boop, 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 boop. Look at Ray just did that. That's wow. awesome, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is what Santa <laughs> usually does. Um, so, um, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna see, am I in it perfectly? All right, go right there. Yeah. Got it, okay. So I'm gonna end the show like this. Um, what was I saying? I've lost my focus. You've completely made me lose my focus. Next year, January the 2nd, we have our live show. It's back, 11 o'clock, Vegas time. And we're going to be doing the theme, holiday photos. Now, challenge yourself, because this could be extremely boring. But what I want to do is challenge you to do something interesting. Take your best holiday photo. January the 2nd, we'll also be bringing back the feature where you get to vote on what the following week's challenge is going to be. Um, remember, head over to Instagram, Photos in Color, 
comment on my long exposure photo. And also I put stories on there most days about things that we're getting up to. So check those out. And I also try and interact with you guys as well. So feel free to leave me comments, say hi, and all of that good stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you to Ray. Thank you to Kev for um, helping me run this live show. Rosie, we miss you very much. She should be back on January the 2nd to be doing the live show with us. That's it, right? That's it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. This is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com. And we're done.